Okay, tonight what I want to do is talk to you about how you can become and be made strong in the Lord. So if you would open your Bibles with me to Psalm 84, and we're going to look at the 12 verses here in this particular psalm. It's a powerful psalm, and I believe it will greatly encourage you. You know, most of us here today, I think, uh, understand the need to be made strong. You know, there are some days, there are some weeks that you see very clearly your weaknesses, right? Everybody would agree with that? I mean, there's just some days you just go, boy, I am, I am weak and I am failing. And so what, what is the problem? What's, the, the, what's going on here? And so I think that many times people have two reactions when they see their weaknesses. They think to themselves, well, I just need to, you know, get up and try just a little harder because I'm not trying hard enough. And then other people see that there is a, an obvious need for them to just surrender more to the Lord. So in which category are you? Do you think, I just need to try a little harder? Or do you say, I just need to surrender more fully to the Lord? I hope it's the latter, because that's where you will be made strong. That's where you will be strengthened. That's where it will all take place. Now this particular psalm, I believe hits some of the high points of what I want to share with you tonight. And so let's just read it. Psalm 84, verse 1. It says, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and a swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, which is literally the valley of weeping. It says, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools, or literally with blessings. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield. And look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. But the Lord God is a sun and a shield. That is, he is my provider and he is my protector. The Lord will give grace and glory. Not might. He will. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. This psalm, I think, is one of the most powerful psalms. I, I can't tell you how many people that I've ministered to that are in hospitals, that are dying that the Lord has brought this particular psalm to them and used it as a powerful tool to just lift them up and to encourage them. So my intent tonight is really to explain to you how you can be made strong because I think most of us, we know we are weak. I mean, you wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't know you were weak and you needed to be made strong. So the question is, is how will you be made strong? And will you just depend on yourself or will you depend upon Him? 
Will you trust in yourself or will you trust in Him? Will you go from strength to strength or you go from strength to weakness? Which will it be? That's the question. I think the first thing that is essential is to realize that being made strong is a divine work. It's something that God does. In fact, if I think I'm strong, I am in reality very weak. And yet when I see my weakness, I, I need to point my, my eyes and direct my eyes and my attention to Him because that's where I will be made strong every single time. Now the Scripture makes it clear that throughout the Bible from beginning to end, we're going to go through several verses here tonight that reveal that fact, that it's a divine work, that it's the Lord who strengthens you. He's the one who sustains you. He's the one who provides for you and protects you and sustains you with his strength. In 2 Timothy 4.17, when Paul was, well, this is his last epistle. These are the last few words that he will write before his own death. And he basically is declaring that everyone has forsaken him at this moment. And what does he say? But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. So when everybody forsook him, he actually found God's strength at that moment. He said, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. So have you ever had that experience? Have you ever cried out to God and said, God, I don't see how I'm going to get through this. And then experienced his strengthening hand. He all of a sudden shows you a way out of the itch issue or the situation, or he shows you a way through the situation. And he just gives you that sustaining strength. That's what Paul experienced. And if anybody needed to experience God's strength at this moment, it was him. I mean, when you are about to lose your life and you know it's coming, I mean, he knew it was coming. I mean, he states it right in the few verses before this. He knows it's coming and he knows that everybody has forsaken him and he goes, and may it not be charged to them. There's, even, there's not even a hint of bitterness there. That's powerful. Why? Because the Lord stood with him and strengthened him. And he'll do the same with you. When Paul cried out over his thorn in the flesh, whatever that was, whatever it was, the Lord said, I'm not going to remove it. So God does say no sometimes. And we've got to handle that, right? We've got to accept the no's as well as the yeses. And so the Lord said to him, no. But what did he tell him? 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength. And that's what we want, isn't it? I want his strength, not my strength. I want his strength. He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. And so weakness is really not a bad thing. It's really a good thing if you will trust in the Lord at that moment. If you trust in yourself or you feel like I can just pull myself up by my bootstraps, I can handle this, I can make it through this, I'm going to gut it out, I'm going to go forward. You know, it's just not God's solution. That's not where you're going to find that strength. You're going to find it only in Him. In Hebrews 11.34, by faith, the men and women of the Old Testament, it says, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the enemies of the aliens. 
Now the portion I love out of that verse is out of weakness we're made strong. So clearly the Bible teaches that out of weakness, we'll see this in a few other verses that we're going to look at tonight as well. Out of weakness is where I find his strength. If I will call upon him and call upon his name. That's where you're going to find his ability and his strength in your life. God made his people stronger than their enemies in Psalm 105, verse 24. It says, He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. Now, this is pretty powerful because I really believe that that is what God has done with the United States of America. I mean, he has made us stronger than our enemies for several hundred years. And I guarantee you, I don't think that most people realize today that I, I believe that is God's strengthening hand and protective hand about us. That is what took place in the nation Israel. And they did not, they did not recognize that strengthening hand. And many times they were put out of their land because of their rejection of, of the Lord. But God made Ezekiel's heart strong against the rebellious people of Israel. In Ezekiel 3.8, it says there, Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces, and your foreheads strong against their foreheads. Now basically, the Lord told Ezekiel, I'm going to send you to a bunch of people who are not going to hear you, not going to listen to you. But he goes, I'm sending you anyway so that they will never be able to say, I didn't send someone to them. I didn't send a prophet to them. And so he tells him, I, you're just going to have to be strong and I'm going to make you strong. I'm going to make your forehead strong. In other words, he says, I'm going to give you courage I'm going to give you that ability to not be afraid, not turn away, because he's going to get some hard looks. Have you ever had hard looks from people? And you think to yourself, boy, I mean, there are daggers coming from their eyes. They want, they, they don't like me. I've sensed that a few times. Just a few. And I'm telling you, you need God's divine strength. Because when that's happening, you have the temptation to just kind of turn away. Look away, turn around, and run. But the thing is, is that God's got to give you that kind of strength to resist when there are rebellious people. God will do it for you as well. In Micah chapter 4, verse 7, then when God regathers the Jews back to their homeland again, this is what he says he will do. He says, I will make the, the lame a remnant and the outcast a strong nation. So the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on, even forever. Now there's two really important things in this this particular promise and this prophecy here that we're reading in Micah. The first is, have you ever seen pictures of the Jews coming back to their homeland in 1946 and 47 and 48? I mean, they are lame and outcasts. They are destitute. They have left Europe after an incredible time of war. They are nothing. They are not a strong nation. And yet the Lord says He's going to make them a strong nation. He's going to take the lame and the outcast and He is going to make them strong, a strong nation. And then He says He will reign over them in Mount Zion. So that is really the, the key here to well, it's one of the proofs from Scripture that when God regathers the nation back to their land again, that He will come again. 
And so you see it all right there in that one verse. You don't have to take verses and put them together. It's right there. Read it in its context. It's clear from the context of the chapter. It's talking about the kingdom age. When they, uh, the people will take their swords and beat them into plowshares. Okay, so there's no other time in history than that time. So read it. It's very, very powerful. Joseph was made strong when he was in a very weak place for many, many years. We just finished the book of Genesis and the story of Joseph. Remember this statement in Genesis 49, 24. It says, but his bow, referring to Joseph, remained in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. Interesting. So it's that picture of someone trying to pull a bow back and they cannot pull it back by themselves. And so someone else comes and puts their hands over their hands to help them pull the bow back, giving them the strength to do it. And that's what happened with Joseph. He had no strength. He had no ability. He was a slave. He was in prison. He was in prison for something he didn't do. And he had no strength. And yet God strengthened him. He remained in strength. And why? Because he trusted the God of Israel. And he trusted his word. So if you experience this strengthening process, each of these verses I've shared with you just previously are just the process. This is how the Lord does it. So if you experience that, you say, well, nah, maybe not enough. Well, why? Why haven't you experienced it more? Well, secondly, I think you need to see that you are weak and you need to renounce your trust in yourself. This is something that is essential from the scripture. In Proverbs 28, 26, it says this, He who trusts in his own heart is what? A fool. A fool. But whoever walks wisely will be delivered. So if you trust in yourself, that's the most foolish thing that you could ever do. Now, notice what it says at the end of this psalm, Psalm 84, 12. Blessed is the man who trusts in you. Notice verse 5. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you. You see, put those two together. It's basically renouncing your, your trust in yourself and acknowledging your trust in Him. So in every trying situation, trying circumstance, every single time you get to that place where you just go, I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. That, that moment, you've got to say, Lord, I renounce my trust in my own self, in my own understanding, my own devices to get myself out of this, and I put my trust in you. And when you do that, you are going to find his strengthening work and his, that strengthening process take place inside of your life. It's powerful. Now notice I didn't say here that you, ne you need to renounce trust in yourself. What you need to do is continue to renounce trust. Not have you renounced trust, but are you renouncing trust? Because that is our, all of our biggest struggle, is it not? We, we just, I just have done it. I can do it. I'm going to do it again. I don't need to trust you. I know how to handle this. And it's the worst thing I could possibly do. So this is essential for every single one of us. It's something you have to do every day. It's not something you did when you came to Christ. It's something you do today and tomorrow 
and for the rest of your life, whichever and whenever the circumstance arises. So thirdly, what you need to do to be strengthened by God, to be made strong by Him, is you need to strengthen your faith in Him. If you're going to renounce your f trust in yourself, then you have to grow in your trust in Him. Blessed, verse 12, is the man who puts his trust in you. So you say, Lord, I'm trusting you. And I want my trust in you to grow. Now the scripture is very clear about the fact that you start with a measure of faith and that faith should grow. It should grow exceedingly. If you read 2 Thessalonians, in the first chapter there, he talks about their faith growing exceedingly. So faith has been given to you. You need to, it should be growing. To have that grow is going to require something from you. Now, if you're weak and you are stumbling, I can guarantee you, you are weak in your faith. And it needs to be strong. So depending on how weak you are, how weakened you are, how, how much you stumble, that equals how, how much you need this to occur in your life. This is how much you need to have your faith growing. So how do you do that? Well, it's by building yourself up in prayer. Notice right here in our text, he says in verse 8, O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. You see, the reason why he's praying and the result of what he's praying is because uh, he has faith to pray and prayer is going to cause him to grow and mature in his faith. It's natural. In Romans chapter 4, verse 20, Remember, Abraham was a man who struggled in his faith as we studied in the book of Genesis here recently. And it says, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And it was, this is the result of what God does as you cry out to him in prayer. Prayer brings you in contact with the strong hand of God, which enables you to be strengthened by His hand. That's what He does. In Jude chapter 1, verse 20, it says there, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So if you want to build yourself up in faith, then you need to pray in the Spirit. You need to pray by the power of the Spirit, and you need to pray in the Spirit. So that is the result of prayer, because it's the result of contact, living, real, personal contact with Him. A person who prays little will have little faith. I can guarantee it, because the Scripture guarantees it. In Psalm 27, verse 14, David said, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So do you do that? Do you do that on a regular basis? Do you do that when everything is going wrong for you that day? Do you go and do you wait upon the Lord? A person that does that is a person who trusts. A person who does not do that is a person who is very weak in their faith. And they're depending on, their, on themselves. That's why they're not praying, is because they are depending upon themselves to get themselves through that circumstance. So prayer reveals a lot to you about you. Another way to build yourself up is through the Word. 
This is where faith comes from as, as well. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes. If you want faith to come, then it's going to be by His Word. So a person who prays, a person who is studying the Scriptures on a regular basis, that person, their faith is naturally going to grow. Now there's another way your faith grows. Now you're not going to like this one. But it's trials. That's how, it, that's how it grows. That's right here in this particular chapter, this Psalm 84 that we just read a moment ago. Look at it with me again. Verse 6. As they pass through the valley of Baca, or the valley of weeping. Have you been in a valley of weeping the last few days, the last week? Or recently? Notice it says, they make it a spring. They go through a valley of weeping and they turn it into a spring. It says, the rain also covers it with pools. And the Hebrew word there is literally, if you have a center reference in your Bible, it's blessings. They, so they, they turn the valley of weeping into blessings. And that happens how? Notice verse 7. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. In other words, for the psalmist, the, they are coming to the house of worship, the temple. They're coming to seek the Lord and to wait upon Him, to cry out to Him, to offer unto Him. And then he makes it so clear, verse 8, O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. So if you want your faith to grow, it's going to entail going through times of trial. That's what life is in a fallen world. That's what life is in a fallen body. There are trials, and th this world is full of them. And so don't be surprised or don't think it's strange that you're experiencing those trials because everybody else is experiencing them. Think of the Christians that are in northern Iraq and Syria today. I don't, I don't have any trials compared to that. Not when somebody says convert to Islam or die. I have no trials. My, I, I, my trials don't even come on the scale next to that. When I have to run from my home, when I see heads, decapitated heads on poles stuck in the town square, I don't, I don't have any trials compared to that. Nothing. So, put it in perspective. It, because that is an essential thing. In 1 John 2.14, Notice, John says, I have written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. So that tells me I can overcome the wicked one and it tells me how I overcome the wicked one. I have to be strong in the word because if I'm strong in the word, I'm going to be strong in faith. If I'm strong in faith, then I'm going to turn the valley of weeping into a, a valley of blessing. God's going to turn everything that comes my way, good or bad, and He's going to turn it into good for me. Very important. Now, fourth, if you want to be made strong, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think that this is one of the most essential aspects of the Christian life. And I'm not at saying, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm asking you, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? And are you overflowing with the Spirit? Are you asking God to fill you with His Spirit today? 
because that's the essential part. This is where the supernatural work of God's strengthening process, that's how it takes place. And if I look at myself, if I look at other people, if I look at the world, if I get distracted, I am not going to be filled with Holy Spirit because I'm going to be looking someplace else for my happiness, my joy, my peace. It's, and it's not going to happen. Paul prayed in Ephesians 3.16. And he said, he prayed that God would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man. So in the inner part of you, you need a strengthening to take place. You need a fortification put about your spiritual inner man, inner woman. You need to be strengthened there because that's where you, that's how you make decisions. That's where you make decisions is from the heart. And if you're weakened and you're struggling in your heart, you're going to make the wrong decision. You're going you're gonna to choose the wrong path. And it will not end up well. Supernatural power, supernatural strength. Now, I have seen people in, in, in the midst of incredible tragedies in their life. I've seen them in various sicknesses, uh, dying of, you know, different cancers. And I've seen people in the midst of different conflicts with uh, their spouse or their family members or and people react to those circumstances in one of two ways. They either go from strength to strength or they go from strength into weakness. That's, that's what I, I see. I see people handle those situations totally different from each other. It's like somebody who is, is on their deathbed and they're, they know they're about to die. And they go, you know what? I'm good with this. I, 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 I'm trusting the Lord. Uh, God is giving me His grace. If He wants to heal me, I believe He can do that. And He can do that right now. I mean, when you hear people say something like that, and they've got the joy of the Lord in them, it's really, it's just amazing. And then another person you go to, they have just the opposite attitude. They're angry, they're bitter, they're resentful. Why God? Why me? They're angry. One person is trusting the Lord and is going from strength to strength. The other person is going from strength to weakness. And that's the reality. And the difference is the power of the Holy Spirit in that person's life. Because he is the supernatural agent that strengthens you in your inner man. And if you haven't experienced that, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I would love to pray for you tonight. You just, if you say, you know what, I don't know that power you're talking about, then I would encourage you, come up here and let me lay hands on you. Let me get some of the other leaders of our church here to pray for you that you might be filled with the Spirit because you need an awakening to take place. You need a supernatural happening to take place inside of you because that is, it's real. He is real. In Ephesians 6.10, it says this. Paul said, finally, my brethren, what's the last thing he wants to say? Be strong in the Lord. How? And in the power of His might. So it's His might. It's His power that enables you. And unless you know that power, you're not going to experience His strengthening in your inner man. It, it just won't happen. So think on this. I, you need to experience His strengthening. And as we push closer and closer to the end of this age and the, the return of the Lord, you are going to need His strengthening power 
in your life. And I am not joking. So have you sensed that infilling of the Spirit? If you haven't, ask. And you know what? Jesus said, Matthew 7, 7, ask. Now that's in the present tense. So literally he's saying, ask and keep on asking. He said, seek. That's in the present tense. So literally he's saying, seek and keep on seeking. He says, knock. That's in the present tense. Knock and keep on knocking. And so it's, it's got to be taking place today. Now, fifth and last here, if you want to be made strong, it, you will be made strong by the grace of God. Now, everything that I've shared with you tonight, the strengthening process of God's divine work inside you, renouncing your trust in yourself, growing in your own faith, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Each one of those issues is the result of grace. It's God's unmerited favor. It's His gift to you. It's something you cannot achieve. It's something you cannot deserve. You can't ever be good enough to get it. It's something that you just receive by faith. You just say, Lord, I'm coming, I'm asking. Because you love me, you've promised to give this to me. Again, in Paul's last epistle before his death, what does he pray for Timothy? 2 Timothy 2.1. He says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in grace. Now, many times I find that people begin with grace and then they try and to be made perfect in their own strength. They, they go, thanks for the forgiveness, thanks for the, the boost out of the pit, I can handle it from here. No, I need, I need grace to save me and I need grace to walk each day. And that will bring the infilling of the Spirit. That will bring a work of the Spirit inside you. And it will give you that willingness to acknowledge, Lord, I don't want to trust in me. I, I am not going to trust in me. I'm trusting in you. And He will work that work inside of you. The more you depend on yourself, the weaker you will become. The more you depend on Him, the stronger you will become. Because you will be being made strong by His power. Now let me just leave you with one verse of Scripture. Or actually it's a, several verses. Isaiah 40, verse 28. There the Lord speaks through this incredible prophet, Isaiah. And the Lord says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. So he never gets tired. And I'll tell you, we probably weary him big time. But he never gets tired. He never faints. Never tires, never faints. His understanding is unsearchable. So he understands every single thing about me. Every single thing about you. Every single thing about every single person on this planet. You can't teach him anything. He's smarter than anybody could ever imagine. It's unsearchable, his wisdom. And when you ask for it, Oh, my goodness. I mean, have you specifically laid some of those issues before him that you say, Lord, I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't see how this is going to happen. Show me. What should I do? I mean, just, I well, it was two nights ago, I was just crying out to the Lord for some direction in some specific issues that I was concerned about. And... The Lord spoke to me. I mean, he just spoke to my heart. He said, this, this, and this. And I went, okay, I'm going to go to sleep now. 
And I, I was out. And I thought to myself, Lord, that is so powerful. I just thought, thank you. You just, you answered that. That's his unsearchable wisdom and understanding. Try it out. It works. Isaiah goes on here to record, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. So he gives power to the weak. That's me. I need power. I am weak. So he gives power to me. And to those who have no might, that's me. And he increases strength. So he will increase that, that strengthening work inside of you. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, you know what the word renew means? It literally means exchange. That's what the Hebrew word means. So they will exchange their strength. They'll exchange their weakness for his strength. So they renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So as he is, he will make me. He will make me to be somebody who runs and not get weary. Now the scripture warns us about being weary in well-doing. Have you ever felt like that? You know, when you've served or helped someone, you've given, you get weary with well-doing. But a person who waits on the Lord on a regular basis, that person is going to be renewed every single day. They're going to touch the hem of his garment and they're going to experience that release of power into them, into their inner man. And if you try and live life uh, any other way than that, it's not going to work out well. You're not going to, you're going to faint. It's going to happen. So if you want your strength renewed, this is how to do it. If you want to experience that, you need to wait upon him. Amen? Amen. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, thank you so much that, Lord, you are ready, you are willing, you have promised, you have, Lord, declared you will enable us. You will strengthen us. You will enable us to mount up with wings like an eagle. Lord, that's what we want, every one of us. I pray, Lord, for those that are just discouraged and they've stumbled they've sensed that incredible weakness i pray that at this very moment you will you will strengthen their inner man lord you would lift up you will encourage you will strengthen as only you can and lord i pray that you would make us men and women of prayer men and women of your word, men and women that are filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, fall upon us tonight. Strengthen us. And Lord, we believe you, you will. Lord, we pray for the, those in, in northern Iraq and in Syria and those that are all around this globe that are being persecuted for their faith, that are in fear of their lives or that are in prison tonight for their faith. And Lord, we pray that you would stand with them and strengthen them just like you did Paul the Apostle. Strengthen them. Visit them with your angels and strengthen them. Lord, you sent your angels and strengthened Jesus as he was in prayer. So send your angels and strengthen these that believe in you. Touch him. Lord, we believe you to do it, even at this moment. We give you praise tonight. In Jesus' name.
Amen.